Well then, Mona, it's goodbye for you here. With a loud voice that could match the seabirds echoing in the harbor, my mother-in-law said, "What do you mean? We are going on a luxury cruise with the four of us, right?" As I said that, my mother-in-law twisted the corner of her mouth and continued with an even nastier expression. Did you think that someone like you, who is worse than a housekeeper, could come with us on this cruise? How shameless of you! You're just a payment clerk. A useless daughter-in-law doesn't need entertainment, and you can't spend a vacation at the same level as us. You're so stupid for not even understanding that. I didn't say anything to her terrible arguments. In everyday life, where I was always being bullied without anyone on my side, I had already given up hope. My mother-in-law laughed rudely and got on the ship in a vacation mood. Beside her, my father-in-law and husband didn't say anything. I stared at the three of them in silence, and as soon as the ship departed, I waved my hand and shouted loudly, "Goodbye! I wish you good luck!" Upon hearing that, my mother-in-law started shouting at me. But I just shrugged it off. You are about to embark the best trip I have set up for you. Well, it's the best for me anyway. Enjoy the revenge that I have planned for you, disguised as a surprise. The details will be revealed once you arrive. My name is Mona, a 38-year-old working housewife. I work as a clerk at a medium-sized enterprise. I have been married to Andrew for seven years. Andrew and I were originally friends from our student days. We lost contact after graduating from university, but we started hanging out occasionally after we coincidentally met on the street. We started to develop feelings for each other and began dating about a year after we reunited. Andrew told me a secret shortly after we started dating. He revealed that he was infantile. He said with a gloomy expression, "If I'm with you, we won't be able to have children." However, I wasn't bothered by it. I never really wanted to have children myself, and I thought that if we didn't have children, we could still find our own happiness. So now, after seven years of marriage without children. We are living a peaceful married life as a couple. At the same time, however, we are constantly troubled by our relationship with my parents-in-law. Our house is located right across my parents-in-law's house, and since Andrew also works for the company that his parents run, we often interact with them. I'm not complaining about that. The problem is. That both of my parents-in-law treats me coldly. My mother-in-law has always spoiled Andrew, so she seems to dislike me and treats me like a nuisance. She also tries to push household chores onto me, which is a common story. Mona, I'm busy with work, so you could do the laundry and cleaning for me. Oh, you don't have to cook. I can't eat the food you make anyway. I'm sorry, but I also work full time, so it's difficult for me to do it. What? How dare! Talking back to her mother-in-law, you are not fit to be my son's wife. Pack your bags and leave now. In addition, it's tricky because my father-in-law is also the type who sticks to old ideas. Until when are you planning to work, Mona? You're getting old, so have a child quickly. Seriously, what kind of education have you received so far? Even so, time has changed. You can have a happy home without children. That's not the issue. If you say things like that, I'll contact your company tomorrow and have you quit your job to have a child. My in-laws are stuck in old days, which makes it difficult. I try to respond politely, 
but they give me twice as much in return. So I just ignore them. Andrew acts like he doesn't know anything about their behavior. He is mild-mannered and doesn't like conflict, but that's not always a good thing. He thinks that if he supports me, he doesn't know what his parents will say. So, he pretends not to see it and sometimes even agree with his parents. I hate to say it, but most of the reason we don't have children is because of my husband's infertility. Andrew asked me not to tell his parents, so I didn't. Yet, I'm sad that he doesn't defend me when they criticize me. Despite all this, I still love Andrew. He's a good husband who makes dinner for me when I come home late and makes time for us to go out on weekends. We both love traveling and have visited many places in our seven years of marriage. One day, my husband handed me a brochure. Muna, don't you want to travel in a luxury cruise ship? I have never been on one before, although I have been on a ferry. That sounds like a lot of fun. But we can't come up with that kind of money right away. Well, let's plan to go in two years then. Let's save up and work together. Until the summer of two years from now. Well, he's right. We should be able to save enough money in two years. Okay, let's do that in two years. From then on, my husband and I focused on saving money. We tried not to buy anything we didn't need and did everything we could to save money. And then, when it was six months until the trip, my mother-in-law suddenly visited our home as usual. Hey, hey, I heard that we are going on a luxury cruise ship, right? Have you already made reservations? If you don't hurry, you won't be able to make a reservation, will you? While I was surprised by my mother-in-law's sudden words, I asked her what I was wondering. How do you know? We are going on a trip. Then Andrew, who was sitting in front of me, scratching the back of his head, said, Oh, I told mom, we are going to be away for more than 10 days, so it's natural, right? Yeah, I understand that, but if they find out before we make a reservation, they might say they want to go, they want to come with us. And I wanted to keep it a secret from my in-laws. My inner voice was in vain, and my mother-in-law continued speaking. Work is a little busy at the moment, but it's okay to have fun once in a while, right? I couldn't believe it, but my mother-in-law grinned and I asked, Um, are you planning on coming with us too? When I asked, my mother-in-law gave me a sharp look. What? Of course we're going. My husband will come too. It was an unbelievably audacious statement. I wanted to go on a trip with my husband alone, not with my in-laws. I stared at Andrew, desperate for him to refuse. I wonder how long it's been since we had a family trip. Helpless, I could only sigh as he casually began to speak. From then on, my in-laws frequently visited and made requests about the trip. I thought about asking Andrew, the one who came up with the idea to make the reservations, but he avoided me by saying he was busy with work. About a month before the trip, a certain incident occurred. Andrew went out for a business dinner and didn't come back even after midnight. I became worried, and I took the car keys to go to the restaurant where the dinner was being held to pick him up. Just then, the front door opened forcefully. I'm home. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Andrew took off his jacket and went straight to the bedroom. I was worried and had stayed up until late at night. But he was acting as if nothing had happened. Feeling lonely, 
I picked up his jacket, and something fell out of the pocket. I hurriedly picked it up, and it looked like a small gift box. A message card was stuck between the ribbon. Without thinking, I looked at the card, and there were unbelievable words written on it. Thank you always, Andrew. I love you. My blood ran cold. Various questions circled around in my head. Who was he meeting with just now? Who gave him this gift? What does this message mean? As I continued to think about it, I couldn't sleep and spent the night in the living room. The next day, my husband woke up carelessly with a big yawn. I presented the gift box and message card to him. What is this? Where were you yesterday? It wasn't a business meeting, was it? Andrew immediately opened his eyes and looked surprised. No, it's not that. It's just that um, as thanks for helping her with work. I see. That's quite a passionate thank you. Saying I love you. When I said this, Andrew started stammering and repeating words. No, that's not it. It's just that. Feeling fed up with the situation, I decided to leave my husband and go to work for the time being. I still felt uneasy, but I managed to finish my work. At lunchtime, when I turned on my smartphone, I saw that there were a lot of missed calls from my in-laws. Just as I was feeling annoyed, my mother-in-law called me again, so I had no choice but to answer. Hey, Mona. I heard that you suspect Andrew of cheating on you. Our child would never do such a thing, you know. Even if he did cheat on you, that's just a man's instinct. Um, excuse me. After my mother-in-law spoke in a forceful manner, my father-in-law immediately took over the phone. That's right. If anything. It's your fault for doing something to make him cheat on you in the first place. Andrea only cheats because you don't have children and are always working. When you get home, make sure you apologize to my son. Got it? My father-in-law said whatever he wanted, and then immediately hung up the phone. I had finally had enough. My in-laws, who were turning me into the bad guy. And my husband, who didn't protect me, and even sided with them all these years, I finally decided to execute the plan I had been thinking about for a while. And finally, the day of departure of the luxurious cruise came. My in-laws and Andrew got in the car with smiles on their faces. I was going to drive to the port and board the ship from there. I secretly felt excited. It's going to be a great trip. <laughs> While holding back my urge to laugh, I drew up the car towards the port. The port was surprisingly quiet and empty. I unloaded everyone's luggage and headed towards the pier. I smell the sea. Andrew is acting carefree and childish. Then, at the moment, my mother-in-law approached me with a big smile on her face. Thank you for making the reservation, Mona. Let's meet again in two weeks. Please pick us up. What do you mean? We are going on a family trip with four of us, right? My mother-in-law twisted her mouth and made a malicious face, and continued. Oh, a daughter-in-law is just a stranger to us. Don't you get it? As long as you pay the money, we're good. I didn't say anything. My father-in-law and husband were happily flipping through travel magazines. Andrew noticed my gaze, shrugged his shoulders, and said shamelessly, "It seems to be like that." By the way, I can't see a luxury cruise ship anywhere. Where is it? My mother-in-law looked around suspiciously. There don't seem to be any other passengers either. Did you get the correct location, Mona? Don't worry. 
Please enjoy yourselves from here on. I let the three of them onto the boat. Is this really the right ship? My father in law muttered, looking at the boat in front of him. It was a small boat that seemed to be full with just ten people. So I explained to them, You will transfer from this boat to the luxury cruise ship. It's a security major, they said. So, don't worry. Now, get on board. Hurry. I forced the three of them onto the small boat with their luggage. Well, then, please take care. I called out to the boatmen, and they departed. Goodbye. I wish you good luck. I waved goodbye with a big smile to the three of them. I thought I heard my mother in law shouting something, but I ignored it. After confirming that the three disappeared beyond the horizon, I picked up my belongings and headed back to the car. I hope this will be a fun trip. <laughs> Later, I returned home and immediately gathered my clothes, appliances, and furniture that I had bought before getting married in one place. When I finished this task, my phone rang. It was my mother in law. You! How dare you deceive us! There is no such thing as a luxury cruise ship! Where the hell are we? My mother in law was so flustered that I couldn't help but laugh. After laughing for a while, I decided to answer her question. There was never a luxurious cruise ship to begin with. My mother in law was shouting something, but I continued. I expected you to leave me behind, so I didn't make a reservation. Do you think you can get away with this kind of thing? Where are we? I can call the police, you know. Now my father in law's voice could be heard. The police? That's a bit extreme, isn't it? It's your wife's hometown, isn't it? I just brought you to her hometown. Did you get to see Aunt Mel? Once again, my mother in law shouted. What did you say? Aunt Mel, your older sister Mel. I talked to her, and she said to bring you guys there. She'll probably do you guys super well, you know. My mother in law's big sister Mel was like a mother figure to my mother in law, and had a strong policy for dishonesty. Although we had only met a few times during family events, we got along well from the start. So I decided to confide in her and tell her everything I had been through with my in laws and husband. As I had anticipated, Aunt Mel was furious but offered to help me. Soon, Aunt Mel's gonna come pick you guys up. Have fun! I said that. And ended the call. Soon after, I moved to a new apartment closer to my workplace, which made my commute much easier. While moving, I gathered evidence of my husband's infidelity, which was easy to do since he was careless and left plenty of evidence. By the time the move was over, I had enough evidence to support my divorce case, and with the help of a lawyer, We were able to successfully divorce. Of course, I also requested compensation for emotional damage caused by the affair. The lawyer who went to meet my ex husband Andrew said that he looked devastated and worn out. Aunt Mel was a well known sports instructor in the local community, and it seemed that she had been working my in laws and Andrew to the bone from morning till night. They were now living a life that was as demanding as the life they had forced me to live. Aunt Mel said that if they genuinely repented, they could be released from their duties. However, my in those family business had practically gone bankrupt, and they had nowhere to go. It was no longer my concern, though. I just hoped that I would never have to see them again. On the other hand, I recently met a kind and understanding man who accepted me, including my divorce and everything that led up to it. 
Once his work is less busy, we plan to get married. Although my path to happiness may have been long and winding, I look toward to living a happy life with someone who always puts me first. <laughs>